Number 50. What mass of silver oxide, which is Ag2O, is required to produce 25.0 grams of silver sulfadiazine, which is Ag, C10, H9, and 4SO2, from the reaction of silver oxide and sulfadiazine, which is this whole thing, right? We have two C10, H10, N4, SO2s plus the silver oxide Ag2O, and that's going to yield the two Ag, C10, H9, N4, SO2, and then we get a water at the end, right? Plus water. Okay. So I notice here that they gave me a balanced equation, right? And I guess to start off, let's just rewrite that balanced equation just so that we have it nice and big and we can work, you know, work with it easier. Now, the reason why I say that I have a balanced equation is because I see that there are coefficients already in front of some of the numbers. So for example, you see how I have like a two here? Usually if they give you coefficients, you can pretty much be sure already that um, the equation is balanced. You can always, you know, double check if you want, but usually when they put those big numbers in front to start off with, we have a balanced equation. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to center this. Beautiful. And yeah, we only have the two big numbers and I guess I'll highlight this one as well. Now, just remember, guys, that if you don't see a number in front of, um, you know, compounds in a balanced equation, we have one of them, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, write underneath my balanced equation what was given and what we need to solve for. So, for example, they told us that we want to produce 25.0 grams of this silver sulfadiazine, right? This compound right here. So I'm going to find the compound on my balanced equation, and it seems like it's this guy. It's the product. So I'm going to say that I have 25.0 grams of this. Cool. Now, what was the question asking for? Well, they are asking for what mass of the silver oxide is required to produce the 25.0 grams. So they're asking for this compound, which is over here on my balanced equation. They're looking for the mass, and remember, a mass is grams. So I don't know how many grams of the silver oxide I'm going to have. That's what I'm trying to find. Now, when you're starting with a amount of one compound, and you're looking for an amount of another compound, and the only thing that they have in common is through a balanced equation, you're doing stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is just a fancy way for saying going from one compound to another with the balanced equation, by using ratios or conversion factors. Now, when we're doing stoichiometry, we should always kind of remember this flow diagram, which is right here. I'll bring this a little bit down here. It's always grams to moles to moles to grams, grams to moles to moles to grams. You can cater this to specifically what you need, but generally they're usually going to start you off with the grams and you need to find grams of another compound. Now, for here, right? They told us, what did we start off with? Well, we started off with 25.0 grams, and maybe I should make this in red just to kind of go with the starting material. The A's are what you started with, the amount that you started with, and the B's, or the ones in the blue, is the compound that you are looking for. So I'm just going to cater this to what I'm searching for. So I was starting off with 25.0 grams, right, of A. Now in this case, A is this huge compound. So I, this is, this is a big compound. Maybe I'll just say, you know, A, G, C, 10, blah, 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 right? You guys get it. It's this whole thing. From there, I'm going to go to moles of specifically the AG, C10, blah, blah, blah. And from there, I can now convert to moles of the compound that I'm searching for. In this case, it's the AG2O. So in this case, I, I think I have enough room to write it down. So I have AG2O, and then my grams, 
I can finally convert to AG to O. Now this is all big one conversion. So it looks like there's going to be three individual steps. I know that there's three individual steps because there's three arrows, but start with what you're given. So in this case, we're going to start with 25.0 and I'll keep it with the colors. So I have grams of the AG C10 H9 N4 S04. Now, we're just making a conversion. We want to go from grams of that compound to moles of that compound. We've done this conversion many times, right? All we have to do is multiply by a conversion factor, and we put the unit that we don't want on the opposite side. So grams of the AgC10H9N4SO4 goes on the bottom, and the moles of agc 10 H9 and 4, SO4, yikes, goes on the top. Now, when I like to do stoichiometry, I always like to put my units first, and then I come back and I say, okay, what are the numbers that go on the top and what are the numbers that go on the bottom? But we've done this conversion many times, right? We're going from a gram to a mole of the same compound. That's using the periodic table. So this step from grams to moles is always your periodic table, right? PT. And remember, when you're doing the, the conversion on the periodic table, you always have one mole. So wherever the mole unit is, whether it's on the top or the bottom, just put a one there. The mass that you're going to find on the periodic table goes with the gram value. So now we got to just add up the mass of this huge compound, right? The silver... Uh, the silver sulfadiazine. So get out your periodic tables, get your calces out, and let's see if your number matches very closely with mine. So let's see. I have one silver. Silver is 107.9 on my periodic table. I have to include 10 carbons, so 10 to 12.01. I have nine hydrogens. Okay. I have four nitrogens. Okay. I got one sulfur. So 32. I have two oxygens. Okay. So the total that I have is 357.132. You might have like, you know, 357. That's fine with me. Now everything is accounted for here. So I can cancel out the unit that cancels out, right? Remember, the number does not get canceled. It's just the unit. Now we move forward. I don't want moles of the starting material, right? In this case, it's the product, but it's the number that we started with. I want to transfer over to the silver oxide. So I'm going to keep on flowing. Don't get an answer just yet, guys, okay? You're going to waste time on your quizzes and tests. So try to follow me here. All right, and try to get into the groove of, you know, doing a conversion all in one shot. But it's very, very simple. All you're going to do is just like we multiplied by the ratio, right? We multiplied by that ratio. You're going to do it again. Put the units and then the numbers. I don't want this unit anymore. So that goes on the opposite side. Mole of the AGC10H9N4SO4 goes on the bottom. And now I'm in the other compound, the moles of AG2O. And the question is now, what are the numbers that go on the top here? Well, this is the only thing that's new with stoichiometry. The only thing that has, you know, these two compounds have in common is the balanced equation. So when you're converting from one mole of a compound to another mole of a, of a different compound, you're using the balanced equation, the BE. And all you're doing is you're just looking at the coefficients. That's it. So I look for this compound, and it's right here. There's a 2 in front. So I have 2 moles of this. And then for the AG2O, just like we said before, there was no number here. But that means that there's a secret 1. So I come over here, and I just say that I have 1 mole. That's as easy as that. Cross off the units that cancel. You're left with this unit, and that's where we're at here. But is this the answer? No, I want to get to grams. 
So I gotta keep going. So one last conversion, multiply by that ratio, throw the unit that you don't want on the bottom, and you want grams of Ag2O. What are the numbers? Well, it's a gram to mole conversion, just like the first one was a gram to mole conversion of the same compound, of the same compound. What did we do in the beginning? We used the periodic table. So that's exactly what you're gonna be doing here. And remember, if you're using the periodic table, you find the mole and you say you have one mole, right? There was one mole here, one mole. The mass on the periodic table is the one that you're gonna put for the grams. So in this case, I have two silvers and one oxygen. So two silvers, 107.9 times two, and then I have one oxygen, so 16. So I get roughly two, 31.8. Cancel the unit, boop, boop, and this is my answer, right? I want grams of the silver oxide. What mass of the silver oxide? We have the correct unit. So now I can finally do the whole calculation in one shot. Now, you can multiply all the numerators, multiply all the denominators, and then do your division at the end, I like to just rush through everything. <laughs> Not that I rush through, but I like to put everything into the calculator at once. And I have a, a thing, I say DD. If it's in the denominator, divide. So DD. So if you're doing it in one shot, what you're gonna do is you're going to go from left to right. And it seems like I start with 25. I'm gonna divide by 35.132. Now, without parentheses, uh, yeah, without parentheses, I have a two again, so I press divide because it's in the denominator. And then since this number is in the numerator, that's multiplication. So times 231.8. And my answer I get is 8.11. Now, just for you know, professors who or teachers who like sig figs, just know with conversions. The number of sig figs that you start with should be the number of sig figs that you ended with. So that's why I cut it off at 8.11. And that's the grams of the silver oxide. And that is your final answer. So basically what this means is it's, it's like a recipe. If you want to make 25 grams of the silver sulfadiazine, I need to have 8.11 grams of the silver oxide. That's it. All right, so guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, we're almost at 10,000. It's crazy, it's absolutely nuts. And thank you so much for supporting us. You guys rock, let's keep studying hard and I'll see you in the next lesson. Have an awesome day, bye-bye.